Okay, okay, yeah, just start. Okay, You'll tell me. I'll yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. <laughs> we're, Hi. <laughs> we're here in New Orleans uh, with Josh Starkin, and he's a music, local musician here in New Orleans, and he also has this um, this daily, um, what is it, a podcast? <laughs> what, is what is it? it? It's uh, <laughs> basically like uh, a middle school art project. <laughs> <laughs> he, makes, he makes me and a million and lots of other people feel happy every day. Yeah. I'm the Guy Fieri of music. <laughs> uh, he basically tells you to have a good day every right. day. Great day. I say have a, a great, great day, day. with but a you, new musical guest. But how do you have, I have a okay, question, how do you have so many diverse different friends who play music? Like it's amazing. I've, I've made a conscious <laughs> choice of playing different kinds of music and with different kinds of people from different backgrounds. So you, you've... Since you've, I've been here. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that's and that, that's very important to me because yeah, it's a goofy sort of thing that I do, but also I try to make a point of showing people that music is a diverse thing. It's something that happens in people's homes. It's something that happens right. uh, anywhere at any time if you wanted to. New Orleans, of course, is a city that lends itself to that a bit more than, say, like Los Angeles. Right. You don't see people playing music in the street All as the often. Time. Right, yeah. right. Uh, something about the close proximity of things here in New Orleans. There's Help something, that. it feels like it comes out of the walls when you Yeah, well, oh, culturally, it's just a super old musical culture. I know, it's, yeah. it's amazing. So that's kind of what, that's part of what our foundation is doing. So we're in Southern California, sure. and we are, um, you know, we're going to be educating about the cultural history of the music. So we're having a... New you know, Orleans music? New, well, or American music. American so music, so it right. it starts in New Orleans. Right. We're, we're starting our, our um, educational, start. educational yeah. program, mm -hmm. talking about the history of American music, which starts right. in New Orleans, jazz and blues, and then we work right. through all the other well, um, offshoots. Of I, I, I've studied music in school. I have a master's in jazz studies. And I, I came here uh -huh. and I studied the history of jazz to a degree. And I think that that, that narrative is important, but also it's often oversimplified mm -hmm. because the United States is... It's always been a large country, even when it was just right. 13 colonies. Right. And I, I, I would argue that it strongly developed here. Mm -hmm. A lot of the innovations in American music were made here by Black people, mm -hmm. and also in other places. I mean, up in, you know, Duke Ellington, for example, was from Washington D.C. Right. And him and Louis Armstrong were around the same age and started having their music careers around the same time. So, my, I, I would have somewhat of a counter argument to do that yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. it all somewhat rose up at the same time, but New Orleans had a very strong influence right. on what was going on. And there around. were different influences. There was, you know, Native Americans, sure. you know, people coming up from the Caribbean. Right, right, right. The colonial, uh, the colonial cultures, the French and the Spanish yes. cultures, the, the British cultures. Right, the marching band, like everything. Right, coming. right. Marching bands from Germany or Poland or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, other places That's in Europe. That's what's fascinating yeah. to me. And, and you're right, it wasn't just in New Orleans, but right. it sort of all seemed to like coagulate or something here and, and like it's, it has strong branding up. it had strong yeah it had strong, <laughs> it had strong branding. branding then and now <laughs> it does have good branding yeah definitely um, like you said the stores are everywhere they got yeah, the look down yeah they got it down <laughs> um, so but so you're you moved here like eight years ago 2010 you yeah and so yeah. you you're, you're working musician you play in different bands yes I have my own band one's called Nebula Rosa it's a, a Latin rock band the lead singer's from Nicaragua but the the other members, one is from Los Angeles originally, and the other is from uh, Tennessee. Uh -huh. And his grandfather was a blues musician who uh, had a career when he was a young man playing with like Johnny Adams, I think, or, or certain like uh, uh, notable blues musicians in Memphis. Uh -huh. wow. But it's, so there's like a mixture of culture going on with that band. I've played with tons of different people. When I first moved here, I played with Delphio Marsalis. Uh -huh. uh, Leroy Jones is a friend of mine who I played with, a great trumpet player. Wendell Brunius. Uh, yeah, 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 he's I great. I this trip. I gotta, I gotta yeah. find out where he is. So I went, I went to jazz school at Florida State and I came here for my master's and I really made a point of coming here and um, immersing myself in the culture. So you had your master's here? Yes, at, at oh. University of New Orleans. Oh, okay. Yeah, I studied um, with Steve Mazikowski and Brian Seeger. Those are my guitar professors. There's many other great professors that I've ever uh -huh. working music. And I find that to be very important. Yeah, yeah. well, there's, there's so many working musicians. Oh, here. yeah. It's, just, it's like a blue collar musician's town. It is. That's a good way yeah. to put it. Mm -hmm. I know I had it phrased yeah. that way. But it is like a blue collar yeah. musician. Because tourism town. is just. Huge. There's enough tourism yeah. to keep all these musicians well, in, you, in work. If you look at the history of the city, it's oil left in the early 90s and the 80s and went to Texas and they had to find how to make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though tourism was a big industry, but it's, it's only expanded, especially since Katrina. Right, it's gotten mm -hmm. better after. Yeah, I mean, uh -huh. are you talking about the city? Like well, I think people realized, or? well, people realized 
when they almost lost, when we almost lost the world, I think mm -hmm. they like how much how beloved it was, you know? Sure, sure, sure. I mean, there were also people on the other side who were like, why can't it just sink into the sea? Yeah, yeah. People here are, are the natives are very, very strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, um, talking about tourism, like tourism to a degree rubs the, the natives the wrong way sometimes yeah. too, because it's an exploitation yeah. of the culture to a degree. Like for example, I'll, I'll be on a balcony playing a wedding <laughs> and I'll, on breaks I'll see second lines for weddings, like two different ones yeah, coming down yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. So we're at a very particularly interesting time when it comes to uh, how the music and how the culture is actually developing here. And it uh -huh. seems to be very closely tied to tourism, more so than ever before, in my opinion. Uh -huh. I'm not from here, so I can't. And you feel like that's not doubt. good because it's just um, kind of skewing it too much a, to the. There's a fine line, uh -huh. you know. I I feel like it can, in ways, I don't want to say warp, but I guess I'll say like warp the intent of what some artists do here. Uh -huh. And they're using their creative capabilities in ways that can possibly be contrived or just trying to fit into a formula right, or box. But whatever, that yeah. happens everywhere. In Los Angeles, there are people that are trying to make formulaic pop music. So right, yeah. I guess and then you get to Austin, there's, you right. know. Yeah. But I guess the slant here is you're dealing with some, like a history of music. You're dealing with a lineage. Right, right. And like to package that. And you're messing with it. Yeah, yeah it can rub yeah. people the wrong way. Yeah, you know? no, or, or for it to be appropriated too. And, and New Orleans has experienced gentrification after right. the storm as well. It used to be, I think statistically, around 70% or 65% African American. And now it's down to somewhere around 55%. Really? Yeah, because a lot of, Cause a lot of black people back. are going to move back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and a, lot, no, a lot of the real estate was bought by the city and auctioned off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I know <laughs> I'm not trying to be a bummer. I know, but I know something about that. <laughs> I'm giving you the download. I know something about that, yeah. Of what I know, I, you know, yeah. different opinion. Yeah, but, um, but I do, I feel like the music, in some ways, is it's still evolving here, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Like music, you know what I mean? Because like, we come just, I come once or a year or so, so I almost like see it evolving. Yeah, yeah, you know? everything everything changes and evolves. Yeah, you know? yeah. New Orleans might be- living, breathing. Evolving. Right, New Orleans might evolve a little slower than some other places in the United States because the the idea of like consumerism here is in a place like Los Angeles or right. New York, where it's like we need something new. Put her in a new outfit, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. let's try a different beat. There's more tradition. Right, tradition. there's more of an emphasis on roots music. Yes, you know, yes. the, the elements of of American music that are foundational. Right, you know, right. Like, whether it's like playing with certain kinds of grooves or certain kinds of melodic language. Right. Or, yeah. And there's a lot of, I mean, when we go see artists, a lot of them um, play a lot of, like, they'll play, like, Professor Longhair, they'll play, like, stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, there's they still the repertoire, yeah. And, and so they keep that alive, like, they, they, yeah. they always pay respect. They, I, almost every time I see a show, I feel like everyone's, they do a, a couple of covers of somebody from mm -hmm. the history of New Orleans, and, and yet they're evolving it forward. But there's, like, a, there's some sort of respect and, 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 you know, a tradition of keeping some sure. of those artists alive. Yeah. Even on the, the radio station, they yeah, play OZ. It. If you go to mm -hmm. play a jukebox at, at Chart yeah. Room, half the jukebox yeah. is like Fats Domino and sure, Professor sure. Longhair. Definitely, and that's kept a lot, that's, that's just, yeah, it's from the soil. <laughs> yeah, but that's what I love it's about it. It's important, there, during that. Mardi Gras, people play that music. I mean, it's playing all year round, like you said, on yeah, OZ yeah. Or, or in bars, you know, things yeah. like that. I mean, it's great music. I, I learned a lot of it coming here. I, my interests now are shifting towards more original uh -huh. music and content right. and things like that. Are you that writing are, music now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. with, my band, with, band? yeah uh -huh. with my band, yeah, with my band, Uh-huh. Um, but also other artists, you know, I write music with and undoubtedly the influence that the city's had on me in these past years is, yeah. comes out in what I do. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's like you're forever changed now that you moved to New Orleans, right? Yeah, sure. You know? It's, like, it's, it's, it's yeah. I'm 30 now, and I was 22 when I moved here. Yeah, it was definitely formative. It was formative musically. Yeah, for sure. You. Yeah, it was yeah. an extension of my education. I really think I love being in school to a degree, but moving into the real world definitely taught me a lot more, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not that not that I don't value what I learned in school. I do. But when you see how things work in, yeah, in real you know, life, I mean, school is school, but you know. When you get out and you're actually practicing a craft, you know, mm -hmm. you, you get more, even no matter what it is, even, you know, I went into marketing and it's like, once you got in the real world, it was like, oh, right. this is how it works. You're dealing with yeah. humanity at that yeah, point. Yeah, it changes. It's humanity yeah. studies. Yeah, yeah, you need to, you need to, you know, get in the workforce, 
you know, you start working, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Um, you have to learn about business. You have to learn about like, you have, all you these have kinds to of actually things. get out there and do yeah, it. Yeah, because before know. I was just in practice room, practicing scales or yeah. Char Charlie Parker heads or yeah, whatever, yeah. and that's like, it's not going to get me work. And people like you, like <laughs> other people, like you say, you're a friend from Tennessee or whatever, like people come here. Yeah. When they're in their There's 20s, a magnet. If they, if, yeah. because it's a city that they know that the music is mm -hmm. happening and it's evolving. Yeah. And I think, I think sense the storm too a lot. Uh -huh. A lot of people came here, uh, and it's only increased more and more. I That's noticed. interesting. Well, a lot of clubs reopened, a lot of bars reopened, a lot of venues were built. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. You've been to Frenchman Street. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It had half the the restaurants and bars Before. that it has now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There were empty lots, and the Dat Dog was a. Uh, Basically, just like a rubble lot that fire breathers and like gutter punks and traveling kids uh -huh. hang out in. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and now it's it's a little more bur bourbonified. Yeah, yeah, it is, but it's but it's more music centered. I feel sure. like a little bit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's still but. it's the economic model of that street is not, in my opinion, on par with some other places as far as like ticketing or. Uh huh. Like, you mean they don't you, charge enough. Yeah, because uh -huh. it goes off the bar. It goes off. It's like, right. in a way, in my opinion, you're, you're like, a, uh, like an alcohol salesman. Yeah, which yeah. Which can be fun if you're like in a party. But for me, I like people listening. Right, right, you know? right, right. It, just it, should, it all should be ticketed. Like, uh, especially during some Jasmine. places. Yeah. Some places too, late at yeah. night. Yeah. But like just the run of the mill during the day. You, yeah. You, if you play an early gig, you might come out with thirty five dollars yeah. for three hours, and that's not good. No, you know, no. it's twenty nineteen. There's a lot of inflation. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, you yeah. know, I was talking to a hundred dollar uh, gig is like it's been a thing that's been around since the seventies. Right, like, right. If that's still a mark for musicians, a then that's actually like propaganda. Right, <laughs> you know, right, if we have this right. idea in our heads that a hundred dollars is enough, I, I don't believe. It. Right, like, it's not. No. But it kind of, that idea kind of goes around. Yeah, know? interesting. Well, there's so many, there's so many musicians here that I guess there's like competition. You know, like yeah, yeah. I've been here a while, so I feel like I don't have to fight is hard right I'm a little bit right. more established but people who come here i see it from time to time yeah yeah, yeah. they're like i'll just play and if you like yeah me, you can yeah exactly yeah. or in new orleans people sit in a lot it's a way of networking yes. it's a lot yes. more cordial a lot friendlier yes. here it's I not like, like who do you know i like that okay, about new orleans, orleans. yeah if that people are all sitting in mm -hmm. and that's how you guys all get to know each other yeah like all the musicians you, you know all the other musicians are most you know what i mean like you guys are all but I know because you have all these people like yeah. <laughs> Well, Well, my network from that has expanded who I know. Like, yeah. My networking people. from that has expanded yeah. Yeah, significantly. Yeah. Uh, who are the, like, because I, I find new people when I watch with them, like, you know, like, who, who do you feel, like, what do you feel is happening? Like, is there, are there a couple of new artists that you think are, like, Yeah, there's a lot amazing? of, a lot of people who are more in my, my age, I guess, like, 80s babies or yeah. early 90s babies. Tank and the Bangos, these big acts. Yeah, The no. Revivalists. Yeah. There's a lot of really great bounce artists, like, um, The Sizzle's great, Denicia is uh -huh. a great singer. Uh, let me see, who else? Oh, there's just a ton of like talent too that's like even it's not even fully developed yet right like, just raw. raw talent yeah there's like, people yeah. who grow up maybe in church or, or yeah, playing yeah. In, in a school band or marching band or whatever who have so much talent developed just from coming from here yeah you know interesting. I, and i think yeah, i've met so many people who i never even knew were like fantastic just yeah. by doing the thing that I, I, I think there's a lot of talent here too like, it's, every, it's, it's, insane. it's insane highest per capita in my life i agree opinion. dude i've not yeah. been to another city that had more talented musicians yeah. in one place well people sometimes here can be a bit more um i guess like talent minded or like show minded than business minded to a fault yeah. but i rather for me personally, I'd rather be around someone who like knows how to perform with other people or like entertain than someone who's like all business and no yeah, show. Yeah, passion or, and... Or just like it has a very plasticky sort of feel. Yeah, yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. There's my plastic smile. <laughs> That's famous. That plastic smile is kind of... Yeah, I need a bobble head. <laughs> you, you, you gotta get a bobble I think head. I have a friend who knows a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. I think I can get you a bobble head. Yeah, Let's I think make you, it happen. I think you need a bobble head. I'll sign it. I'll sign your, sign your you can, copy of you the can, bobblehead. You can sell this. So good. All right. So, well, well um, thank you so much for talking yeah, to us today. My pleasure. I Thanks really, for having I me. I really loved it. I can't wait to see you in your, in your, when you, I'm trying to see you this weekend. Okay. You know, we're yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. around. We're going to be around this weekend. Yeah. So. I'm sure you'll catch me. Yeah, I will. Yeah. All right. So, thank you so much. Have a great yes, day. Have a great day. <laughs>